we go back to our conversation of the body is one. We can't yeah. separate the effect of relationship stress and trauma on yeah. the response of our tissues. And so when we have those kinds of stress and trauma, it makes our body more susceptible to toxins. I'm Dr. Amy, your guide for transforming your trauma into your gift. You adapted to life experiences to survive, but you are not your trauma. What did you focus on these little things called mitochondria? Yeah, so mitochondria have, in, in my studies, they, they've become pivotal to the understanding of trauma, which is fascinating okay. because that's not at all what I learned in medical school, but well, they are we... me like at the, at the core of trauma because trauma is an energy problem. If okay. we had more energy, if we had more resources, we would be able to respond to the problems and stress in our life and not have it become something where we go into a state of helplessness and powerlessness. Right. Right. And what gives us energy is our mitochondria. So we have mitochondria in all of our cells. There can be up to 30 million, I think, in each cell. And yet in the nervous system, in the nerve cells, which are what communicate our stress response and our trauma response, there are 300 million mitochondria in each neuron. So, so that's, stop. So the, so the nervous system, the nerve cells, neurons have more mitochondria than other uh, cells in the body is that right that is right so they are much oh. more sensitive to energy problems and anything that will decrease the mitochondria's ability to keep us fueled and powered with energy or atp in the body so relate that to somebody like so there is this condition that most doctors don't understand and some of them still don't even believe exists chronic fatigue syndrome you know and often people come in with chronic fatigue and the doctors tell them it's all in your heads you know um you're, you're suggesting that there's actually something happening in the in in the and i you know i know the system exists i, I know the condition exists and it's totally related to people's stresses and traumas What's happening on the cellular level then is you're saying that something's happening in their nerve cells. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Something is happening that's affecting the nerve cells ability to respond to stress. And when we right. can't respond to stress, we will go into that place of helplessness. We'll go into that trauma physiology, that trauma response in the body. And so then we get to look at, well, then what's affecting my mitochondria? which is fascinating because that has never been a question that has come up in trauma work before, right? Like typically yeah. trauma therapy, like you go talk to a therapist, you go talk yeah. to a counselor, you don't talk yeah. about your mitochondria. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. here, here we come along and I'm like, no, we've, there's this whole biology of trauma and we have to look at those things that are affecting our mitochondria. Copper, for example, copper excess is one of those factors that actually is associated with chronic fatigue syndrome. Why? Mm. Because it's toxicity to the neurons, to the nerve cells, and it increases their baseline stress. So they're not able to handle emotional stress. They have higher levels of adrenaline, which then if they're not able to metabolize that, it pushes the body into a trauma response. So there's but this whole theology that actually will drive a trauma response. So how do you get a copper excess? You can get a copper excess be for a couple of reasons. One, you have a zinc deficiency. So there's a copper to zinc ratio that is a healthy one. It's around 1.2, 1.3. And if the zinc is low, which is one of the most common nutrient deficiencies in those with a mood or mental health challenge, if that mm. zinc is low, then you end up having a copper excess, which is a neurotoxin for the nervous system, for the mitochondria. You can also have inability to clear out copper well. And so this is where your genetics can influence this and your ability to clear out copper. And this is what actually drives a lot of the postpartum depression because the copper is related to estrogen. And so as the estrogen goes up, the baby needs copper. So during pregnancy, copper levels are going up. Mom's protected. Baby gets all that copper because it is needed for their nervous system. But then once baby's delivered, Mom, then if she has an inability to clear out copper, well, all of this copper is sitting in her system and she gets postpartum depression or anxiety or postpartum psychosis because she's not able to clear out that copper. So copper actually is one of the common things that we need to look for in someone's biology. 
if they have this not only chronic fatigue, but this pattern of continuing to go into and kind of get stuck in a trauma response with the health symptoms that come with that. So two questions. One is, first of all, do you do that through blood tests or what kind of measurements do you take of that? Yes. For the copper, you can do blood tests and it's, um, you also need to measure the protein that's bound to copper in the blood, because that would be the other reason for excess copper is if it's bound to protein, then it's protected. But if it's just free copper, that's when it's, uh, can be a toxic effect if it's in that higher ratio. So you need to test for copper, for zinc, and the protein that's called ceruloplasm. This awareness that you have, um, this is news to me. Um, is that through your functional medicine training or how did you get this? Yes, this is through the functional medicine training and also some nutritional trainings that I've taken for addiction medicine. And then, okay. yeah, all right. have, have added all this in. Which brings you to my next question or statement question. So postpartum depression, that's something um, I used to deliver a lot of babies uh, as a family physician. So I saw a lot of postpartum depression. And um, <clears throat> to tell you the truth, I never occurred to me to look at copper and you know, it just wasn't part of my awareness. But, and here's my question, in every case of postpartum depression, number one, the woman had a childhood trauma or stress significant, which the birth of the baby, you know, triggered number one number two the depression wasn't just in the woman it was in the relationship the, the woman was lacking sufficient support in her environment so we we diagnose the woman as having this so-called disease but in fact what it represents is a whole manifestation of her entire life and her current relationship with her spouse and the environment that's got nothing to do with copper. It's just got to do with human relationships and the nervous system and, 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 and emotional dynamics. How do you bring it all together? And this is where we go back to our conversation of the body is one. We can't yeah. separate the effect of relationship stress and trauma on yeah. the response of our tissues. And so when we have those kinds of stress and trauma, it makes our body more susceptible to toxins not only copper, but a lot of other toxins as well. So that toxins and trauma, like they always run together. And you can ask mm. the question, the chicken and egg question, well, which came first? Did the trauma come first? And that caused the absorption, the invitation for yeah. toxins mm. and then the inability to clear those out maybe, or did the toxins come first? And they created the environment for one to not make the decisions about getting into a healthy relationship or not being able to process trauma because it feels too overwhelming to connect with a body that's irritable from the neurotoxin effect of the copper. So for me, this is where it's, it's all integrated. And that's what I found from my healing journey is that I couldn't just focus on one thing. I couldn't just do, for example, like the somatic work and learn how to connect with my body. I couldn't just do parts work, which has yeah. been another essential piece for me. I also had to bring in the biology piece because mm -hmm. they're all affecting the nervous system all at the mm -hmm. same time. And so when I can integrate those pieces, I saw that I was able to experience what I call just more expansion in my healing. Whereas before I just, I would come up to a wall and I would get blocked and my body would shut down. And I, and I didn't know why until I started integrating these pieces and seeing, oh, like they're all affecting the nervous system. So of course I have to integrate all of them in, in a healing journey. Certainly, um, my wife went through a significant postpartum depression with our third child, and as we talk about this in the myth of normal, um, and um, our relationship really was the issue. Um, uh, I was not a supportive husband. I was a workaholic doctor, and um, I was dutiful, but emotionally, I was I wasn't there, you know, and. Um, so my bias is to look at those interpersonal relational and internal dynamics. Um, um, I didn't think about the biology of it. Now you're making me rethink it now. But um, certainly, um, I think the point remains that you can't look at anything in isolation. The human body is not an isolated organ our heart is uh, or organism the heart is not an isolated organ it's all one you mentioned um this expansion and i know in your three-week course um i think your third week is about expansion 
Um, they only run through that those three weeks because I think the first one is about safety, which is about we've been, you know, that's sort of the polyvagal getting the nervous system to in a state of safety, which is a safe, which is a state of um replenishment and 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 uh, regeneration. What are the, what are these three weeks that you that you guide people through? Well, like you, like my my lessons learned have so much come from the mistakes that I've made on my own healing journey. So yeah. I didn't I did not do this uh, what I call the essential sequence. I did not do this for myself because I didn't know this at that time. Right at that time, I was doing the best that I could with the information that I had, and as I started piecing together the 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 different components. That's what I landed on. And, you know, you talk about the, the biology piece and where does this fit in as much as I am still a medical physician. And so I am very interested in how the biology affects our nervous system and can hold us back or hold us stuck. Yeah. I found that that's not where I need to start people. I actually need to start people with this connection with their body and creating yeah. different experiences yeah. for themselves first. And even with that, Gobber, I started to see changes in their biology just from doing those exercises. So that's where I was like, wait a second, something's happening here. And that's what affirmed for me that this is the work that also changes our biology. We can't, we can't separate it. And it's an essential yeah. piece for me. It's become the foundational piece and the foundational journey. So I start everyone with creating, teaching them for themselves, how to do this, how to create a felt sense of safety for their body.